Howdy folks, this is Archer's Paradox. Good Saturday morning to y'all. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time on uh, the videos titled, so y'all want to learn how to shoot a stick bow. So this video is going to be pretty long. Uh, I'm guessing probably over 10 minutes. I'm going to cover a lot of uh, different facets of shooting a stick bow. Uh, so let's not uh, beat around the bush, so to speak. Let's jump right into it. Obviously, this is a traditional bow. This is a recurve. This recurve is a uh, 49 pounds at uh, 28 inches. So a little background on uh, myself as far as shooting traditional bows. Um, when I was eight years old, I received my first bow. It was a Herder's uh, 1972 Sandbar Junior. It was a 20, 24 inch draw, 35 pound recurve. And for seven years, that bow was my best friend. I never, never even entertained getting a compound bow until I was 15. So I learned to shoot pretty much on my own through trial and error, learning different styles of, of, of how to shoot a traditional bow. Before we go much further into that, let's, let's get back to, uh, to if you want to get into shooting a traditional bow, be it a, a recurve or a long bow, uh, getting the correct draw length and draw weight is critical. Let's say, for instance, if your compound bow, you're drawing 60 pounds at 28 inches. Well, the style of shooting I'm going to try to teach you all is uh, what they call instinctive shooting. So essentially what you want to do to size your recurve, you want to drop down anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches from your draw length of shooting a compound bow and drop down at least 10 to maybe even 15 pounds your peak draw weight. So my, uh, I shoot a uh, 27 inch uh, Hoyt at uh, 60 pounds and this bow is a uh, 49 at 28. You can typically subtract between three and four pounds per inch of draw length subtraction. So I'm guessing I'm shooting around, my draw length shooting trad bow is probably about 25 and a half inches. So subtract about 20, subtract about uh, six pounds of draw weight. So I'm down to about 43 pounds, which is about 17 pounds less than when I shoot a compound. And the reason why I say you shouldn't try to shoot a recurve bow, that's your compound bow is obvious. You know, if you're, if you're shooting a 60 pound compound bow with an 80% let off, you're only holding back uh, 12 pounds because you figure 20% times 60 pounds is 12 pounds because you got 80% let off. Well, obviously this is, uh, as you know, there's no cams or wheels or anything on this bow. So at, at your draw length, you're going to be holding the peak, peak weight. Couple, couple uh, key reasons why you shouldn't uh, try to draw that much weight is you don't want to be over bowed, meaning that, you know, as you start shooting a recurve bow or a long bow for fun, you're going to love just flinging your arrows and watching your arrows fly to the point where you actually, you know, forget about anything else and before you know it your shoulder is going to get uh, damaged or sore after you know several days of weeks of doing that uh, number two is if you're over bowed meaning you're drawing too much weight you're going to start developing bad habits so uh, those are two two important things to think about uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, talk about some of the different aiming styles um, let me pause the video and i'll set the camera up Okay, now we're going to talk about the uh, what I call the three different styles of actually aiming a traditional bow with no sights. Uh, the uh, classic style is a split finger where you have uh, your middle finger and your ring finger below the knock and your index finger above the knock, okay? And then you have what they call the three finger under, which is all three fingers are underneath the, the arrow shaft. And then the third one, which I, I uh, use, is a split finger instinctive. Um, so let's go over, we'll go over the three basically. Three fingers under, essentially what people do is they actually use the arrow as their aiming point, okay? And they will shoot in a more uh, vertical, vertical orientation, which obviously I don't, I do not use. So they draw back and they actually use the arrow shaft as the aiming position. The uh, split finger uh, gap shooting is essentially what they're doing is I'm going to try to try to line up the bow now. When I draw back, okay, as you can tell, the arrow shaft is below my eye. In fact, it's probably about three to four inches below my eye. So when you're shooting, you're going to have a gap in between the arrow shaft and your eye. So they use that gap 
to judge where they think they should should aim so to speak and then the third style which I highly recommend if you plan on hunting uh, with a recurve or, or longbow is what we call instinctive okay and just kind of quickly covering the basics of instinctive shooting when you shoot a basketball or when you throw a baseball or when you throw a football you don't aim okay you don't aim at all yeah it's actually impossible to try to aim you know you can't you can't uh, put a sight on your hand when you're shooting a basketball or a sight on your uh, your throwing arm when you throw a baseball or a sight on your throwing arm when you're throwing a football you know so you pretty much learn from muscle memory uh, you know if you're trying to hit hit let's say first base from uh, from shortstop you've learned from throwing baseballs how hard and what angle to launch that ball on its intended trajectory to either hit the first baseman or one hop to the first baseman same with throwing a, a, a football you know if, you, if you're a quarterback or you've played around you know throwing a football with your buddies or your, or your gal pals or whatever you know you got somebody crossing running a slant route you know and they're crossing 10 to 15 yards well you obviously lead them okay but you don't aim you just it just comes from practice okay a third third analogy would be shooting a basketball you know if you're set at the foul line and uh, you know you pretty much you got to get your body in alignment and obviously for a right-handed uh, basketball shooter you're gonna be justified to the left so you're in line with the hoop you don't aim okay it's pretty much it's called instinctive and that's the same way with uh, shooting a bow instinctively a good buddy of mine 25 years ago uh, actually kind of taught me because I grew up as a gap shooter nobody ever taught me as an eight-year-old you know I just I learned on my own because I figured out you know after losing two or three cedar arrows that you know and I didn't have the money to buy them. you know so I learned on my own how, how to actually shoot and hit targets somewhat successfully so I learned to gap shoot to where to where I would draw back and I'd see that gap between the arrow and my eye okay and then I would just either either drop the arrow down if I was closer to the target or raise the arrow up higher if I was further away from the target the one the one fallibility of, of gap shooting is is a pretty <clears throat> excuse me makes pretty pretty common sense and there's gonna come a point meaning a distance from yourself to the target to where your gap okay is now not is not what I would call negative negative being that here's your here's your eye and here's your arrow shaft to where it's going to become positive meaning that there's going to be a point in time where your arrow is actually you know arcing 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 but there's going to be a point in time where your arrow is actually going to be dropping so what happens is now that gap you know gap gets smaller 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 and then all of a sudden let's say at 22 yards it's the same same uh, uh, trajectory and then you shoot beyond 22 yards now your gap goes positive it flips okay the problem with gap shooting if you're hunting is if you've relied so much heavily on gap shooting you get a target beyond 22 yards or 19 yards or 23 yards or 25 yards now you can't see your gap why can't you see your gap well because your bow hand is now obscuring your target so that's a big reason why I stopped gap shooting and I learned how to shoot instinctive so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and fling a couple of arrows here and let you guys see what it looks like Okay, so now the, the, now the next thing we got to cover is your actual body position and your stance, okay? If you all have ever seen some of my bow test videos at some of these shows I've done, you'll see me hunched over, you know, leaned over in a, in a crouched position. I'm not going to try to teach you how to shoot like an Olympic uh, uh, archer, you know, where they take a, a vertical bow position and they're drawing their anchors down here, down below their chin, because they're using sights. The whole reason why you kind of hunch over when you're trying to learn to shoot instinctive is okay let, let's let's look at the olympic shooter they're in this position okay well by by rotating your body and your bow canting it angle downward you actually get your eye position over the shaft in a, in a much more usable position so when you draw back your eye is actually in line with the arrow shaft 
which puts your hand in a better position to make a good shot. We'll try this angle. In fact, if you all ever watched uh, some of the old Fred Bear videos, you see Fred, Fred was one of the purest instinctive shooters. You know, you would see him hunched over and he's got his bow canted at an angle like this. I'll go ahead and shoot a few arrows at this position. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the uh, getting to, to full draw and the release, okay? Um, another fault I had, I had uh, grown up with as a kid, because nobody told me any better, was that I was a, a notorious snap shooter. Meaning that I would, because I wasn't strong enough to hold 30, 35 pounds at 24 inches, I would get to about this position and let go. It's actually short stroking it, okay? And I would, I would not get to my side of my cheek and then try to release through. Um, so that's one thing I still struggle with to this day, you know, I'll, you know, I, I watch some of my videos I've shot on doing bow tests and you know, I think boy, I, I came short of my anchor before releasing, okay? The other important thing to do is You all seen some of my videos uh, covering back tension, okay? Not just with a uh, uh, With a back tension release compound, but with the, with the caliper style and also with your fingers shooting one of these bows you uh, Essentially you have to use back tension. Why? Because your arm and your wrist and your fingers aren't strong enough over a relative short amount of time to hold all that weight. So you have to rely on your larger back muscles to actually execute the shot. I'll go ahead and shoot a couple here and we'll, we'll see what it looks like. Notice how my hand, you'll see my hand kind of jerk this way, but then I try, to, I try to, because of my back muscles pulling, what happens is, the fingers coming off the string force it in this direction and then my back muscles pull it straight back. Let's watch another one. How about Robin Hood, that one. Ooh, that's a nice group there. I gotta zoom in on that one. I'm not even, I'm just sitting there uh, talking and shooting and Heck, that'd make a compound shooter proud. All right, I got my uh, bag target set up at about this is about a 42-yard shot, and this is gonna this is gonna hopefully illustrate the uh, reason why I do not gap shoot, uh, because at this range the gap has gone positive now because the arrow you know has to has to rise so much higher because of the trajectory of the arrow to actually hit the target. So if you're a gap shooter, you're going to struggle with this shot because your bow hand is going to obscure the target. We'll go ahead and fling a couple of arrows, see if I can hit that bag. I haven't shot this bow at this range in a long time. We'll see what happens here. See if my instincts still are in there. Oh, woo -hoo. the bag is my friend. Ooh, that's not too bad. Ah, that was a little low. I short, I short drawed that one. I could tell. I didn't hit my anchor. There we go. All right, let's try to put one in the heart and lungs. What do you say? Yeah, that's a dead deer. One more. Yeah, there we go. All right, folks. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, If you ha have any more questions or something that I didn't cover in the video, just uh, write a comment below the video that I'm going to post here on Facebook. Or if you're all, you're all on YouTube, just uh, write a comment and uh, maybe we can work things out. But anyways, this is Archer's Paradox. It's a glorious Bluebird Saturday, day before Easter. Hope you all are having a good, good, good weekend. We'll see you later.